Uh, Steve Shabbat, and I yield five minutes to you. I thank the gentlelady from Tennessee for yielding. I also want to thank her for organizing uh, this special order this evening on such uh, an important issue. And none of us knows for sure what the United States Supreme Court is going to do in the next few days, the next week, maybe 10 days. None of us even knows for sure when it's going to happen, but we all, I think, anticipate that it will be soon. But I think none of us uh, would disagree with the fact that whatever they do, it's going to have significant and real implications to an awful lot of people all across uh, this country. And I think it's important to remember how we got into this uh, position, this mess, quite frankly, that we're in right now relative to health care and what happened. Um, the Democrats uh, were in complete control. Uh, President Obama had been uh, elected, and uh, they controlled the House and the Senate. And rather than act in a bipartisan manner on something as important as this, which is what they should have done, they should have got input from both sides and done what was in the best interest of the people when you're dealing with something so important as health care. They basically rammed through a bill. Unfortunately, few had even read the bill, as we heard over and over uh, again. Uh, and in fact, Speaker Pelosi, who was Speaker at the time, even made uh, a, a statement that it was important that they pass the bill so they could find out what was in it. What an incredible statement uh, to make. Uh, and unfortunately, deals were made uh, to, to get people to vote for this legislation. The ones that came out uh, that seemed to be the most uh, egregious were maybe on the other side of the Capitol building, uh, in the other body. Uh, some of the things that, that uh, we heard about there. But this is really not the way the legislation is supposed to happen, especially something as important uh, to people's lives as their health care uh, is. And I think they thought that, in fact, statements were made uh, that the people would like it. They'd fall in love with it once it was passed. Well, that clearly hasn't happened. There was a poll out, a New York Times and CBS news poll that just came out recently uh, that indicates that two-thirds of the American people uh, hope they'd like to see the Supreme Court either strike down uh, this health care legislation or Obamacare, whatever terminology one prefers to use, but they'd like to see it struck down either altogether or at least in part. And, and unfortunately, when they focused so much attention on this health care bill or Obamacare, they should have been focused on an even bigger issue, and that's how the economy is so weak. And so many people are unemployed. They were back at, at that time and still are now. Uh, and instead of devoting attention where it should have been on the economy and getting Americans back to work, they passed this so-called economic stimulus package, spent over 800,000, uh, excuse me, 800 billion dollars, and it did grow one thing, and that's government, but unfortunately did not grow jobs in the private sector. And after passing that monstrosity, they moved to health care and then passed this piece of legislation. It took them basically a year uh, to get it passed. And unfortunately, what's happened is it didn't, as you indicated, um, and, and I think you did an excellent job in pointing out that what was said and what actually happened. They said it's going to not going to raise taxes. Well, it's raised 20 different taxes. Um, they said it was going to drive down health care costs. It's increasing health care costs. They said it was going to create jobs. It's reduced jobs. In fact, it's been a wet blanket mm. over the whole economy. And I've talked to a lot of small business people uh, in my district back in Cincinnati and the greater Cincinnati area, and I've heard over and over again that small businesses are afraid to hire people. Uh, they're afraid of the new regulations, the new taxes. And so people aren't getting hired and the jobs aren't being created. And this isn't the only reason, but this is one of the biggest reasons that you hear our small business folks say why they're not hiring folks. Mm -hmm. And the small business community, about 70 percent of the jobs created in our economy over the last few decades have been in the small business uh, sector. And those are the folks that are going to be particularly hard hit by this Ob Obamacare if the Supreme Court upholds it. Um, now, of course, as, as our colleague uh, mentioned previously from Alabama, uh, in the House, we passed legislation earlier in this Congress to repeal this bill. But the other body 
wouldn't take it up. And even if they had, I think most of us speculate that the president would have vetoed it. We wouldn't have had two thirds to override uh, the repeal. Um, so we hope the Supreme Court acts. But even if they don't, we hope that uh, this body and the body uh, on the other side of the building will act to, to repeal it. Um, now, relative to uh, one particular thing, the employer mandate, it's been estimated uh, that that has resulted in the loss or will result in the loss of 1.6 million uh, jobs if that ultimately is imposed on businesses that they have to uh, move to this Obamacare. And, and I think we all know that a lot of businesses are just going to drop coverage altogether. People that have insurance now will not have insurance then if this goes through. We also know there's going to be more red tape. There's going to be more regulations. There's going to be higher taxes. And it's been estimated the higher taxes alone are going to be over a half trillion dollars, $569 billion uh, to be exact. And, and, and what is all this for? You know, it's a law that puts government ahead of people. It's a law that cons consolidates power into the hands of 15 unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats that are going to decide how much of our seniors' Medicare is going to be cut, and that estimate is about a half a trillion dollars of cuts also in, in Medicare. Um, so it's just an awful piece of legislation, uh, which we certainly hope the Supreme Court strikes down in the very near future. Now, there were alternatives to Obamacare, things that Republicans have been pushing for a long time. For example, allowing insurance companies to sell insurance across state lines. That means more competition. That drives the cost down so people have more access to health care coverage. Also, association health plans. Um, that means that small businesses can join together in order to negotiate with the insurance companies to have more power to get lower rates uh, for their, their workers and their employees. Uh, medical malpractice reform. We have far too many doctors that order tests, very expensive tests, just to prevent themselves from getting sued. Uh, at least half of these probably frivolous lawsuits. Uh, we need medical malpractice reform. And then finally, health savings accounts, which more and more people are finding more and more attractive, saving them money, giving them more control uh, over their health care dollars. Those are a few of the common sense reforms that have been proposed uh, over the years, but unfortunately uh, have been blocked and and. They put all their money and all the eggs in the basket of this Obamacare, and I, I really think the thing is likely to be struck down uh, in the very near future. Um, and the, the decisions ought to be made by the people back home, around their kitchen tables, people, mothers and, and, and husbands and fathers, uh, talking about what's the most important thing to their family with health care. That's where the decisions ought to be made, not in backroom deals up here uh, on Capitol Hill. So. Yes, we need health care reform. We didn't need this big government uh, cop-out, really, this, uh, this monstrosity, this takeover. Uh, and I know that some of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle cringe when we say takeover of health care, but that, in essence, is what it is. Not a complete takeover, but a heck of a big uh, takeover by, by big government. And that's the last thing we, we need. Uh, so this is bad public policy. It's bad for the American people. Uh, it needs to go. And, and I just want to thank you again for organizing uh, this, uh, uh, this special order this evening and, uh, and look forward to doing future ones and, and talking with the American people. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you for coming here tonight to talk about uh, this program.